Good Saturday morning. This is again Luke. His gospel is a powerful gospel. Remember, he's writing to Gentiles, okay, who haven't got the bloodline. And this is so important because we are facing that now. As we look at the world, the church is spreading globally. There isn't the lineage, the ethnic lineage. Now you have faith. What unites us is faith, not cultural lineage, lineage or ethnic lineage, not Eurocentrism. Now it's global centrism, if there is such a word. Watch what he says. While Jesus was speaking, a woman from the crowd called out and said to him, Blessed is the womb that carried you and the breast that gave you, that, uh, at which you nursed. That's the most fundamental form of any identity, religious and moral identity. It starts in the home and it starts with your mother. You can't get anything more basic than that. That is it, the absolute foundation of the moral arena and, the, and your recognition of self-identity and meaning. That is it. Watch what he says. Our Lord replies, forget about it. Rather, blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. Nothing to do with the bloodline. Imagine he's telling that Luke's got writing to Gentiles. He's saying, did you hear the word and did you keep it? Don't worry about bloodline. It had nothing to do with it. And that is a true thing. We are united by faith, not by blood or heritage or culture. As the European culture has faded more and more in terms of European Catholic culture, Christian culture, America still has, it's going to get interesting, our grandchildren are going to choose whether they're going to be Christians or not, if this is going to be a Christian country or not, in a sense of rooted in Christian values or not. We're heading in a secular direction with the speed, the speed of light, but we'll see. We still... We still, I think of the parish church, okay? The average age in the parish church that I would say is 70. When you look at our religious community, passionate community, the average age has got to be around 70 or 75. See? Where is tomorrow? When I look out at the parish, I don't see much of tomorrow. I see what is and was. See? I'm not, maybe it just happens to be our location. I don't know, but I don't think so. I think this is the story. Willing to bet. Don't know it, but willing to bet. If you go into the third world, especially the Asian community, why I focus on them is because I see their leadership in the world emerging powerfully, economically, politically, and I would say militarily too, but especially economically. Money talks, you see. When I see there, I see young people. I see young people. And I think, when I think of our vocations as a passionist community, our futures with the young coming out of Vietnam and Korea, Japan, not so much Japan anymore, it did, maybe still does, but especially Korea, Vietnam, and China. That tells you where the life of the church is, where people so believe in the faith that they're willing to sacrifice all other human values for the sake of it. Isn't that interesting? Where I don't know when the last time we got a vocation out of Europe. And in America, we have very few. Not enough to bury the dead. See? Tempo cambia. The times change. But the Spirit of God is everywhere in the universe. And we're facing a global community. As the church moved from Jerusalem to Rome, it went from ethnocentrism, that's Luke, Luke's gospel, to Roman centrism, which was global. See, that's the whole point. The Romans that have had no heritage, no blood, no place with, with, with Judaism and Christianity as it emerged, as it was conceived in, in, the, in Jerusalem and in, 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 in Israel, or whatever you kind of call it, um, Palestine. But it became centered in Rome, and that was the known world at that time. I didn't say any of that well, but you could see the move, and I see us today doing exactly that. How am I going to give that money the next pope? The next pope will be an Asian. I don't know. It might be too soon because Pope Francis is pretty old. And it may not be quite the moment. If anything, if I'm wrong, it won't be a European and it won't be an American. It could be an African where the church is so strong. But I guarantee you almost the one after that will be Asian because Asia is is the future of Christianity. And then the missionary efforts of Asia will be to recultivate the faith in the West. That's the way it works. 
We live in a really a magnificent time, a very interesting and very interesting time. We're living in the emergence of a global community, and I would argue a global Christian community. We live in a phenomenal time, in some ways scary. If you want the church to look Eurocentric or America-centric, you're going to look in vain. It, then the, the Asian church is threatening. It doesn't have the same language. It doesn't have the same culture. It doesn't express itself the same way. Think of the 60s. Think of my religious order, where the young Turks, the young, the, the new breed were scary when it came to those of us of the old breed, irrespective of our age. It was our culture. I remember being... That my, I told you this already today, and I've told you other times. I was threatened by some of my best friends in the outfit because they were new breed and I was old breed. I wanted the old way, the way that, I, that it was when I entered. These guys were pushing the envelope, and they were more in line with the church than I was. I was comfortable and committed to what was the present and the past, these guys dreamed about the future tomorrow. That's the church today, 60 years later. She is dreaming about tomorrow, and that tomorrow is Asian, African, see, and European American, North Atlantic. But the truth is, and South Atlantic, truth is Asia. She is dreaming about Asia. It's the new, it's the vibrancy of the faith in the land, new to the faith the way Rome was new to the faith of Jerusalem. Yeah, we live in a great time, a magnificent time. For those that are young, they're going to see, they're going to see the global church. Whether they will belong will be their choice, but the church with them or without them will grow in the, in the, in the global, as a global community. Not only Catholic by denomination, but Catholic by fact. We will be universal, which we were from the beginning. See? It's kind of interesting, isn't it? At least I think it is. It's Saturday, and I'm just looking at a very brief line. Rather, blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. That's the world today. It doesn't speak with a singular accent. It hears the word preached to it in multiple accents, multiple languages, multiple traditions of understanding, but a singular belief in who and, and who and what is Christ, who and what is the church. We live in a great age.